If you heard money is the root of all evil, money is bad, only certain people are allowed to make money, you have to work hard to make money, mm -hmm. this is how you got to do it. And that becomes the foundation subconsciously, like, that's like recording an audio file. You just keep recording that audio file, it becomes a subconscious program, mm -hmm. right? So a lot of people have a relationship with money based on either what they've been told or what they've experienced in their outer environment, right? So, so then we gain information from our environment and the stronger the emotion we feel from experiences in our lives, the more altered we feel inside of us, the more the brain freezes a frame and takes a picture. And that snapshot is called the memory. So think about people who have relationships with money right from the past all beliefs are based on past experiences so you have an experience where you lose money you have an experience where money's taken away from you, you have an experience where you don't have enough you're living in a place where there's not enough money or a family that's not enough money then the emotion that most people are living by on a moment-to-moment -moment basis is lack I'm in lack of having something that I want so the body is saying I'm waiting for some external event to occur I win the lottery, I marry the right guy, whatever right, it is, right, right. that you're waiting for that event to occur, that experience produces an emotion. So the emotion then takes away the lack, and so when we play the game in three-dimensional reality, the creation game in three-dimensional <laughs> right. reality, we experience separation from everyone or everything because our, our senses fool us into the illusion, the hallucination of separation. I'm here and you're there. I'm here and the door is over there. So I'm aware that I'm here at one point of consciousness and the door is over there, another point of consciousness. Okay, so in order for me to get from here to the door, I gotta move my body and do something through space. I gotta do something and everything in this three-dimensional reality is going to take time and energy. The person who's living in lack is waiting for their wealth to feel abundant. They're waiting for their success to feel empowered. They're waiting for their healing to feel gratitude. They're waiting for their new relationship to feel love. They're waiting for their mystical experience to feel awe. That's the Newtonian model of reality of cause and effect. You know, waiting for that event to happen to take away this separation or lack. Nothing wrong with it. It's the way most people create. But what we've discovered is actually something else. The moment you feel gratitude, your healing begins. The moment you feel worthy and abundant, you're generating wealth. The moment you're empowered, you are moving towards your success. The moment you're in love with yourself and you're in love with life, you'll create an equal. The moment you are in awe of life, you're going to have a mystical experience. And so that's causing an effect. It's so important for people to remember that they're the creators of their lives instead of the victim of their life. The victim is saying, I'm feeling this way because that person or that circumstance or I don't have any money is causing me to feel this way. That's my relationship with money. What that really means is I'm using my lack to reaffirm my dependency, my addiction, my conditioning. That's my relationship with money is that I put my attention on money because I don't have it. Their relationship with money is, of course, built on lack. And so when they don't have it, they feel bad. And what they're really saying is, my outer environment, my reality is actually controlling the way I feel and the way I think. So, Louis, why are you in a good mood today? Things are going good. Why are you in a bad mood? Things are going bad today. So this unconscious program of victimization is saying that we're allowing our environment to influence the way we feel and the way we think. Isn't that what victimization is? And, and the stronger the emotion we have to our lack, the more we put our attention on the fact that we don't have it. So then the person has forgotten that they're creating reality because what they're creating is lack. And they're creating more of it. And then they try harder and they force harder. So the experiment then is, let's try it another way. Let's create from the field instead of from matter. Get a coherent heart, get a coherent brain, relax in the heart, and energy moves right into the brain. We've measured this a thousand times. And all of a sudden, the person moves into these beautiful, elegant brainwave states where they're super creative, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the longer you're conscious of that energy, the more you draw that future to you. So then, what does the synchronicity mean? It means whatever you're doing inside of you is producing that effect outside of you. Pay attention to what you did. When the synchronicity happens, do you think you feel suffering or do you think you feel a little excitement? You feel inspired, right? So then that synchronicity is saying, 
use this energy, use this feeling. It should be easier for you to feel this now and go back and do it again. Keep the experiment going. Then here comes the promotion. Here comes the, here comes the email. Whoa, we have something happening here. And then that, that becomes the momentum, right? It's so much easier to forget that vision than to remember it, right? So yes. if you're going to remember it, you got to keep it alive in your mind. How do you keep it alive in your mind? You disconnect from your environment. You close your eyes. You play music in the background. Don't be thinking about what's going to happen in your day. You already know what's going to happen. Don't think what happened yesterday. You already know that. Get in the present moment and say, who do I want to be when I open my eyes? But one day, one shot, one lifetime, what would an abundant person do? Let me rehearse that with my eyes closed. Let me remind myself who I don't want to be. Let me remind myself of who do I want to be. Let's not get up to where the tennis ball hits the sweet spot. When you go, oh, I'm ready for the day now. Now, game on. Now, if you can maintain that modified state of mind and body the entire day without defaulting by seeing someone or doing something, stay in that state, the experiment still continues. And you're changing your energy. Doesn't happen in two days, you're not that good. That's it, you're not that good. People who show up the, for the 21 weeks in a row, this woman, 21 weeks in a row, the end of 21 weeks, she knew it. Boom, her whole life changed, boom. The experiment, she was just changing the process. People who diagnosed with really serious health conditions and they start doing the meditations and they realize, wow, God, my body feels better, my pain feels better, but my values, my scans are still showing the disease exists. All right, did it, does it mean that it doesn't work? No, it doesn't mean it doesn't work. It means like, what am I doing the other 15 hours of the day? Oh my God, I'm in lack, I'm in fear, I'm responding to the same people in the same uh -huh. ways. And okay, yeah, think about this. As long as your response to everything in your life is the same, you're not changing. So change your response to things in your life and you're in the process of change. So then, now I gotta get good with my eyes open. Now I gotta be able to rehearse, oh my God, I fell from grace at that moment in my day. Oh my God, I defaulted back mm -hmm. to the old self. All right, no, so it's not it's only forgive yourself. Like there's a forgiving process like shoot. But if you're truly playing the game, who cares, mm -hmm. right? You just go, oh God, let me brush myself off. Do Keep it, out, yeah. let me get back in my heart here. Let me get back in that place. Let me remember, let me get back in this energy. And let's try it again. Let's try it again. And, and let's just keep the experiment going. Now, does that mean you have to be irresponsible? No, you still have to navigate with ethics and morality. You still have to have personal conviction. You still have to have a vision that's bigger than you and somehow that motivates you because not only you're doing it for selfish reasons, but to contribute to others in some way. Of course, there's going to be recognition and popularity and aggrandizement that goes with it. Money should be the side effect mm -hmm. of all that. The game should be so good of your vision, vision of the future. You have to keep alive in your mind. If you have an hour meditation where you're tuning into your abundant future, but then you're spending the other 15 hours a day in lack, don't expect anything to change, you defaulted. So then let's go a step further. If your personality creates your personal reality, and it does, and your personality is made up of how you think, how you act, and how you feel, then the present personality who's listening to this podcast has created the present personal reality called their life. Nothing big there. Which means if you want to change your personal reality, you're going to have to change your personality. Right. Nothing changes in your life until you change. 95% of who we are is, is on autopilot, right? It's, it's a programmed thoughts, hardwired thoughts. perceptions, unconscious habits and behaviors, and really, really emotional responses that tend to be really knee-jerk and automatic, right? So 
If 95% of who we are is a set of unconscious programs, then the first step to change is becoming conscious of those unconscious thoughts. Now, people think when they sit down to do the work and make their change that they're, they're doing something wrong. No, those thoughts have to come up. I can, I'm not worthy, it's never gonna work. But the person who's truly persevering towards their abundance realizes just because they have that thought doesn't mean it's true. They're curious on what's on the other side of that thought. Ah, well, that's just the thought. And nerve cells that no longer fire together, no longer wire together. So you keep moving past that thought, it, gets, it has less and less power over you, right? Now, you're, you have power over it, or, or better yet, you're using your brain in the proper way instead of your, being a victim to your brain. If you complain about money, if you judge people who have it, if you rush when you're in lack, if you cheat when you don't have what you need, an abundant person doesn't do that. You gotta look at that and say, I gotta break these habits. Yes. Oh my God, if I truly wanna be abundant, I can't act this way. Now here's the big one. If I truly wanna be a new personality that's in a new personal reality, I can't take lack with me. I can't take unworthiness. I can't take the story that goes along with it with my parents or my grandparents mm -hmm. or or my ex or whatever, that story has to end, right? I mean, if not now.